For history and art lovers going to Venice, I made a list of the museums you may find interesting to visit during your trip. This list is based on my preference, not on the museum's popularity or location. Number one on my list is the Pavola Tower. Beautiful place, but it's not very popular with the tourists. And most of the time when we come here, there's nobody, which I cannot complain about because I don't like any crowds on, uh, around me. Um, it's very close to San Marco Square, and it's 115 steps to get up to the top of, uh, of the tower. Love this place. Come and visit. The full name of the tower is Scala Cantorini del Bavolo. Bavolo means snail. It refers to the spiral shape of the staircase. Cantorini is the name of the family who lived in Venice 500 years ago. The architect who built this tower in the early 15th century was a member of the Cantorini family. Number two is Cadoro Palazzo. It's a small museum, but it's worth your attention. Palazzo was built in the first half of the 15th century for the rich Venetian merchant Marino Cantorini. Yeah, 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 the same family. It was a very powerful family at that time. It provided Venice with eight doges, eight rulers. Uh, from the Palazzo Courtyard, the main staircase will take you to the second floor, to the up deck position and to the open terrace. If you want to enjoy the Grand Canal view, Cadoro is the place to visit. Originally, the facade of this palazzo was covered with gold leaf, making it sparkle under the sun. The word ca is short for casa, which means house. Oro means gold, so the other name of Cadora Palazzo is the Golden House. And by the way, if you stayed at the Venetian Hotel in Las Vegas, you probably noticed the Venetian Lions replica outside of the gallery's balcony. This gallery goes to the main shopping area. You cannot miss it. Just look at them. The Las Vegas Lions are identical to the Venetian brothers. Number 3. Carrezzo Nico. And this museum is located on the Grand Canal as well. For years, this palazzo belonged to a wealthy Venetian family of bankers and merchants. In 1935, the city of Venice bought the palazzo and turned it into a museum. The museum is huge. It's impossible to cover all the beautiful artifacts in one video. Hopefully, you will visit Venice soon and you will see everything with your own eyes. One of the main treasures of the museum exposition is the famous sculpture of a veiled girl. What technology, what tools did the sculptor use? Even today, nobody can recreate his works. The secret is gone was the master, Antonio Caradini, a Venetian sculptor who died in 1752. If you like Greek myths, do not miss the sculpture of Medusa, a woman with the mane of serpents. It's one of my favorite Greek myths. It says that the girl Medusa was born with a beautiful face. When she grew up, she fell in love with Poseidon, the Greek sea god. Poseidon couldn't resist the girl's love. When the goddess Athena found out about their love, she grew furious with the young girl. Not with the sea god. No, 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 no. She became furious with the girl and turned Medusa into a monster, so mean that everyone who looked at her turned into a stone. I was ready to stay here for the entire day, but my husband and my mom asked for mercy after a couple hours. So, visiting Carrezzo be prepared to walk a lot. Scuole Grande di San Rocco is number four. It's a small museum with a long history. At the beginning of the 15th century, there were various types of brotherhoods, schooling in Venice. They played an important part in religious life and charitable works of the city. 
Their members came from the middle class. Patricians could be members only if they renounced any position in the government. The Scuola di San Rocco began in 1478. It took its name after San Rocco, the patron saint of plague victims. The deep veneration for this saint and generous donations made the Scuola one of the richest brotherhoods in Venice. Santa Maria della Salute is number five on my list. This Catholic cathedral is dedicated to the Virgin Mary. It was built to celebrate the liberation of Venice from a deadly plague. The plague lasted from 1576 through 1577. It killed over 50,000 Venetians, almost a third of population. The construction of Santa Maria della Salute began much later after the plague was over, in 1631, and it was finally completed in 1682. I want to give you a travel tip. If you get tired during a visit of Santa Maria della Salute, a few steps away from the cathedral, there is a lovely hotel, Asina Centurion Palace. It has a great restaurant with a lovely view of the Grand Canal. The Doge Palace is number six. Today we decided to go to visit the Doge Palace and the same, aha, uh -huh, the same Marco Cathedral because it's raining and it's still so much to see here. I'm so excited. The Doge Palace is the most famous place in Venice. I'm not going into the details of the palace's art collection because it's simply impossible to cover it. Do not hesitate to have a private excursion around the Doge Palace and the Palace Dungeons to get a better impression of the time when Venice was a republic. I worked at the tour guide myself, and it's rather hard to impress me with any historical information, but I should admit that the young lady, a guide from the Doge Palace, succeeded. San Marco Basilica is number seven. The cathedral was built in the 11th century, a thousand years ago. Imagine that. The golden altarpiece always attracts visitors' attention. It dated back to the 10th century and it contains 30 pounds of pure gold. There is a story about the Napoleon invasion of Venice in 1797. French soldiers did not steal this masterpiece as they thought it was just gold leaf, not real gold, so they didn't bother melting it down. And, fortunate for us, it survived the Napoleon invasion. Give yourself enough time to walk around the cathedral. When you get to the upper floor, you will see the famous Byzantine horses. They're 1,700 years old. In 1970, these horses were removed from the outside of the basilica and replaced with a modern replica. Now the Byzantine horses are galloping inside of the basilica, being protected from the weather and tourist unwelcome touches. From the cathedral's outside gallery, there is a nice view of the lagoon and Piazza San Marco. Don't get discouraged by the rainy day. In January, during our 10-day trip, we had only three rainy days. Eight, the Corare Museum. It's located just opposite the Basilica on the other side of Piazza San Marco. It contains collections of paintings, books, sculptures, and numerous aspects of Venetian history. This is the famous marble sculpture of Icarus and Daedalus, made in 1779 by Antonio Canova. According to the Greek myth, Icarus was the son of a craftmaster Daedalus. If you have ever been to the island of Crete in Greece, you probably remember that Daedalus was the creator of the ancient labyrinth, where a monster lived, Minotaur, a man was the head of a bull. And Daedalus tried to escape from Crete. One day he watched the birds flying over the sea and he got an idea of how to escape. He made two sets of feathered wings and glued them together with wax. 
He warned his little son not to fly too high because the sun's rays would melt the wax. Icarus ignored his dad's warnings. He flew too high and the wax melted. The boy fell down into the sea to his death. How many times did our parents try to warn us to be careful when we were kids? As parents ourselves, how many times do we try to protect our kids by telling them to be cautious? Our world hasn't changed much since 1779 or even since the time of Greek myths. Number nine is Venice itself. Venice can be named a museum unto the open sky. Almost every house, every church, every bridge has its own fascinating story. Let me tell you one of them, the romantic story about the heart of Melusine. Venice is a very romantic city. Nobody will argue with this statement, right? And there's a lot of love stories and uh, myths and legends about love and betrayals. So, one story tells us about the mermaid. Her name was Melusine. And this uh, mermaid, Melusine, she fell in love with the Venetian sailor. And naturally, the mermaid died and she left the sailor heartbroken. But this is the sad part of the story. The good part is if you're looking for your second half, come to Venice. Touch this little heart and guess what? You will find the love of your life. And this is my list of the Venetian museums. It's based, as I said earlier, strictly on my personal preference. I hope this video will help you to create your own cultural program to enjoy Venice the beautiful 